even though I could run my Ravana as a sniper type and I could make it effective to the point to where it's like it's kind of working, I could be sniping better with a different robot and I could also be doing something better. I could be with my Ravana, I could be making better use out of it. So, uh, to, to explain my art in Amugi, I'm not currently trying to be an assassin, even though I've got the pilot that's built more towards offense. Uh, the main point that I want my art in Amugi to do is I want it to live as long as it can. I want it to annoy the enemies. I want the enemies to try to focus me and chase me down and, you know, focus on me so they're not shooting my enemies or going for beacons. I want to lock down the enemies, zip in and out of cover. I want to use my portals to give enemies, uh, to give my allies the advantage. And I want to make good use of uh, the Battle Breach's repair ability and use my pilot's Wonder Worker ability to uh, keep itself alive. And because I want it to live longer, I got the Reviver drone, which is not an offensive drone. Repair amplifier phase shift. These are all things just to help it stay alive a little bit longer. These weapons aren't even really designed to kill. If I do get kills, that's nice. But my Moogie's to lock something down. If, uh, if I wanted to go... Let, let me... Uh, okay, you'll see. I'm getting my thoughts real quick on weapon types. Alright, let me, let me look at a roll. Let me look at a bot that's got different hard point types like uh, the angler now if I wanted to and I, I normally build my cruel angler <coughs> pardon me I normally build my cruel angler as a close range brawler because you know that's the range the effective range of uh, the electric shift when you use the ability you can see the outline of it so I want weapons like Scatter, very powerful, 200 meter range. Uh, I, I, uh, I've i not invested in my prototype. I, I haven't really put levels into Rhyme or Toxin, but those are good close range options. They reload. The Toxin reloads very fast. So even though it's got a low damage output, it reloads so fast you can almost shoot constantly with it. Uh, another close range option for me would be the cudgel, and I would combo that with the hammer, scald, needle. Before the nerf, I, the claw and talon weapons were good, and uh, those are pretty much what uh, I guess I'm trying to play around with a spark, but that weapon's been nerfed. It's an old weapon. So I would those are the light range light range. Those are the uh, short range weapons and I would complement those three light range weapons with a heavy weapon that would be the you know the counterpart to it. But if I wanted to brawl like in a mid range option, then I would start looking towards my Nucleon or my Quarker, you know, weapons like the uh, the Wasp and the Hornet. I don't think there no the the wasp is medium range. There's no light range option. Uh, Viper, whatever type of Viper you have, you know that that's that's the 500 meter, uh, nice brawling weapon. Not super close range, but it's not it's not not sniping. The Razdor, Cremola, Smuda, if you've got them, it's an option for you. Blight, Hazard, and Decay. If you have them, then you would be using your angler's ability to avoid damage. You you wouldn't want to get close and use your angler's ability if you've got long-range weapons. Because even though long-range weapons work up close, long-range weapons perform the best at long range. And weapons with shorter range tend to have a higher damage output. And the trade-off for that is you have to put your, you have to get close to the enemy. You have to leave cover. You have to put yourself at risk to get into range, and you're rewarded with that with uh, with more dangerous weapons. So it's a high-risk, high-reward situation. 
If you're going to be using your cruel angler to go after the enemy and assassinate them, then you want your angler to have more powerful weapons that come online once you're closer. So rather than trying to snipe the enemy as soon as you can, you want to find cover and advance towards the enemy while saving your ability. Then you want to ambush them, blind them with your ability. Best case scenario is while you're reloading. You're reloading while you're in your electric shift. So when you come out of it, your weapons are fully prepared and then you can continue the, uh, the assault. So weapons that re can fire while reloading work very well on the angler for that reason. Uh, the way that I play my Seraph, I've got, I've got a whole bunch of Seraphs, as you can see. But I've got one level 5 unknown Seraph, and I've got a level 60 Victoria Pilot. I've got Speed Shooter. Which, whenever I give this, uh, whenever I give this particular uh, pilot and Seraph a Viper, it enters acceleration mode faster, so I, it doesn't have to ramp up. Basically, I start shooting and it goes into full firing mode very quickly. So I like to run this Seraph with two Vipers, and my uh, okay, they're equipped on something right now, but I've got two level five Ardent Vipers. And, and I like to get within 500 meters range because that's the range of the Viper and that's the range of uh, the Retribution weapon. So I get in 500 meters range, I let loose with both Vipers, I fly around the enemy, I shoot them with my built-in weapons, and before my ability ends, I land behind cover, empty out my Vipers and let them reload, and then the reload time on the Vipers and the recharge time on Skyward is almost the same. So by the time my weapons are reloaded, and by the time I can go skyward again, it all comes online at the same time. So I can fly back in the air at 500 meters range, unload weapon, you know. You can play your Seraph as a sniper, but by doing that, you're foregoing the, uh, the built-in weapon potential. And you can play your unknown Seraph as a brawler with more powerful short-range weapons. But you're putting it more at risk because the Unknown Seraph is a fragile robot. So to play the Unknown Seraph to its best ability, you want weapons that either have extremely high burst or have sustained fire at a safe range so that you can take flight, immediately get into the good position you want to be in, do as much damage as you can as quickly as possible, and before your flight runs out, you want to be able to get back into cover. Weapons that have a long reload time can work on the Seraph because while you're while you're technically while you're not flying, you don't want to be fighting an enemy with the Seraph unless you're going to win. Like if like oh this guy's about to die, then you want to fight with the Seraph on the ground. But if the other enemy, you and the other enemy, are both at half life and you're on the ground with the Seraph. Go, you don't want to fight with them because you're, you don't have the advantage. Your, your mech's not built to brawl like that. So you want to wait until you're able to fly again. Then all of a sudden, you know, you want to be really super aggressive. And that's, that's kind of why I don't really like a lot of the new mechs with all these incredible abilities and moments of power. Because when the abilities go off cooldown, they're weak and fragile and they run and hide. And they have to because they're using a mech that is not durable. But they're built durable with a moment of weakness to where it's like, oh, if the player's good, then they can play around that weakness. But it doesn't end up being that way because it creates a dichotomy where you're playing in two different modes. You're, you're either, oh, my ability's up, it's time for me to go Rambo. And then it's, oh, my ability's down, time for me to stop playing the game and go hide in a corner until my ability comes back. So you're not constantly playing the game at the same level. You're just like, oh, I've got the advantage. I guess I'll play. Oh, no, there's a chance I might not come out on top. I won't play. It discourages players from engaging with situations that are risky. I, you know, I didn't play War Robots uh, before all these changes, but I would have preferred a more brawling type game where it's like we all came here to watch robots blow up. Why are we afraid of doing that? Switch into the next video.